All right, let's go ahead and move to example three. Example three. All right, now they're telling you to fill in the steps. I have not looked at the test for unit seven yet. I don't know if they're gonna make y'all fill in these steps, but y'all, I'm. It's it's one skill to solve math and it's another skill to put it into words. I don't know how obsessed I am gonna be about making sure y'all can put it into words. I'm more obsessed with the left-hand side. So if you can get the left-hand side done and you can't really put it into perfect words, we're fine, but we're gonna do this anyways. Um, so let's look what's going on. Uh, on this first one, let's just take a look on what happened. Is, are there two radicals? The answer is no, there's not two radicals. So you get one radical on one side and everything else on the other. Well, check it out. That's already given. We already have that. So A is just given equation. It's a weird G. A is just given equation. Given equation. All right. Now, uh, Check out what happened. This five somehow magically turned into 25 and this square root disappeared in quotations. Well, what do you think that means? I think that means we probably squared both sides. Probably means we squared both sides. Let's see if that's true. This squared, uh-huh. Five squared, uh-huh. So for B, what did we do? We squared both sides. And I'm gonna leave it in red so y'all can kinda see it. Squared both sides. I can't believe this is as good as my digital handwriting gets. Welcome to failure, y'all. All right, now we have this thing going on here. Uh, what are we doing? We're combining like terms. Clearly they added 17 to both sides because 17 uh, right here plus 17, you see that? So here we go. Oh, I should have done a different color. It doesn't matter. It's plus 17 on both sides plus 17. So C is combine like terms. Combine like terms. You can more think about it like how did we arrive here at C? What happened from B to C? We combine like terms. D is just solve for X. D is just after you get to that solve for X, uh, you divide the seven out. If you divide the seven, divide by seven, divide by seven, you get X equals six. So uh, solve for X. Now, you have to go back and plug this uh, solution in. You have to go check it. And look what happens when we get it. We end up getting 7 times 6 minus 17 plugged in, which gives us 42 minus 17, which is 25. The good news for us is the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So does 5 equal 5? Yes, that is true. Boom. Done with that example. I'm actually going to keep example 4 and 3 together. I thought I was going to do a different video, but nah, I'll just do it here. Uh, okay, so um, A, given the equation. Now they want us to fill it out here. And again, this is given equation. Typically, I don't like notes like these, honestly, but these are, these are solid notes, y'all. This is like if you were in college and you had a TA, which means teacher's assistant or professor, pass you out notes like this, this would be a godsend. So if you're struggling to read this, consider it a challenge to like get through it because it's totally worth it. All right, so let's look at our thing. We've been given the equation. This says isolate the radical term. Isolate means gets by itself, get by itself, and this is the radical term, so we're gonna move the one over on this side. So when I get down here, I should have square root of three X minus eight equals, because that one is gone now, equals, what is three minus one? Two. So we got that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna square both sides. We are gonna square both sides together. Let's square it. Square both sides, square both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and write that in. Square both sides, square both sides. And good for us, we ended up down here. So when we square both sides, that radical is gonna disappear and we're gonna have three X minus eight equals two squared is four. All right, combine like terms. This should be pretty simple at this point in our lives. Put the eight on both sides and we end up with 3x equals 12. Solve for x, which means divide by three, divide by three, and you get x equals four. Combine like terms, solve for x. You can see I'm kind of going through this because we already did this part. Solve for x. All right, cool. So we ended up solving for x, and this is what we got. We got x equals four. So now you got to check this, y'all. If x equals four, 
if x equals 4, let's check this. Let's go to the original equation, not the second step in the equation, the original equation as it was given to us. So I'm going to plug it in 3 times uh, my 4 right here. You can see where I plugged that 4 in. 3 times my 4, coming from that equation, minus 8, and then plus 1 equals 3. All right, 3 times 4 is 12, so let's go ahead and do this together. 12 minus 8 plus 1 equals 3. All right, let's look at this right here. Uh, 12 minus 8 is 4. Square root of 4 plus 1 equal to 3. Square root of 4 is 2 plus 1 equal to 3. Add the 2 and 1 together, and am I out of room or can I still go down? work. 2 plus 1 is 3 equals 3. Is 3 equal 3 true? Yes, it is. I almost wrote turd. <laughs> true. Uh, solution, x equals 4. That's how we do all that. So now you're educated on this. Uh, I am going to do live lectures as well, but good luck. There is a blue worksheet to finish, and yes, I'm putting it in the gradebook because if I don't, y'all aren't going to do the work. So welcome to my hell.